The future of insulin pumps is bright, and today I'm getting into all things next generation of what insulin pumps could look like. From tubeless, screenless, all-in-one CGMs and pumps, longer lasting, fully closed loop algorithms, and more customizable systems. Welcome to the show, I'm Justin, I have type one diabetes, and on here I talk all things diabetes tech, news, research, and management. I've got this YouTube channel, a podcast on Mondays, a blog, diabetech.info, with articles of the latest diabetes tech news. So follow me in all those places, links are in the show notes. Today, I'm guiding you through what the future of insulin pumps are gonna look like, from things that we already know are in the works to just general features that I wanna see in this next generation. There are so many cool features and new hardware that is planned for the future that you should keep in mind as you're thinking about, well, what system do I wanna get next? And today's episode is brought to you by our sponsor, Thrivable. But more on that in a bit. Let's get into it. Let's start with a big one tubeless pumps. We already know that most of the companies are working on a version of their tubeless pump. And I do have a video that's going to dive even deeper into tubeless pumps on YouTube soon, so stay tuned for that. But right now, there are really only two main players. There's the Omnipod pump, which I use, and the Medtrum that I've never used and I haven't really talked much about. So if you use that, let me know in the comments. Let's start with Tandem. They have a couple products here that they're working on. The first one is a tubeless form of Moby. I put out a lot of content recently on Moby. I tried it out for three months. Currently, Moby is a tubed system. You can use a longer tube or a shorter tube and adhere it to the body. But a tubeless Moby is in the works where a pad would go on your skin and you would clip Moby into that. I assume that that pad would have an infusion site that would be applied both at the same time using some sort of applicator. This tubeless Moby could be a good segue into their next tubeless pump that they are already working on, which is called Siggy. Siggy comes from a company called AMF Medical that Tandem acquired back in 2023. It's a reusable patch pump and it's got breakthrough device designation from the FDA, which means that it could be streamlined through the FDA process. It is a rechargeable pump, just like Moby. It has its own little cradle. Earlier reports of this device from AMF Medical said that users would get two of these pumps, so one can charge while the other one's being worn. This is a reusable pump, so one piece of it would be used all the time, but that pad is disposable. You would take that off and put on a new one, then just clip the pad in. It is waterproof too, so swimming and showering should be fine with it, just like Omnipod. And interestingly, what I like about this device is it uses cartridges similar to what we'd see in the InPen Smart Pen. They're these long tubes that you just put into the pump and then you don't have to like put insulin into it. It could be a much easier experience and you could take that cartridge potentially from one pod to another. Next, we've got Beta Bionics working on a tubeless pump. I actually had them on my podcast and they told me all about it but I am very excited that they're getting into the game. So Beta Bionics is known with their pump that there's no carb counting with it. You just kind of log how big your meal is, whether it's small, medium, average, or large. So this device could potentially be used in a similar way with the same algorithm. Beta Bionics just showed off its tubeless pump at ADA 2025. The device is dubbed Mint, which is short for mini insulin therapy. It's a two-part durable device. One part are the brains that is reusable and the disposable that's connected to a patch or an adhesive and it contains the batteries, meaning no charging is needed for this device. Mint is slated for release by the end of 2027. I've got a lot more to say about this pump and will do a deep dive in my tubeless pump video coming up, but if you want a deep dive right now on all of the features, what I think about them and how they'll impact the industry, I just released this article for all Access members. And they're trying to make this device a more seamless process than other ones, where you would just put it on and it would start working. You don't even have to use an app. They said that this pump would only last for three days. I think that they should start with at least four, maybe get a jump ahead of what pumps can currently do, uh, especially that we're seeing other pumps that are already working for seven days. I think it's funny to be working on a pump that's gonna come out in a few years that still only has those three days when, you know, 
Shouldn't we be aiming for more? Not tubeless pumps, of course, just the extended infusion set from Medtronic, which I'll get into in a second. Speaking of someone who is working on a tubeless pump that lasts seven days, Medtronic. I have reported on this pump a fair amount. There's a lot we know about it already. One is that it would hold 300 units of insulin. This is 50% more insulin than tubeless pumps today. And what's great about that is people with type two diabetes who take more insulin each day will be able to wear this type of pump to the full maybe three days. And people with type one who may be using less insulin could even potentially wear this for a week. Medtronic says that they are working on using their extended infusion set, that seven day infusion set on this device. The pump is said to be modular, so there would be multiple pieces, possibly similar to Siggy. And Medtronic recently sent out a survey to users about what color pump they want. So here is what that looked like. I kind of like the lighter gray or maybe the darker gray, but not the darkest gray. I think it's a little more high tech, but not too dark for me and not too bright white like the Omnipod is today. Let me know what color you like the most. There's a poll up on diabetic.info. I'm curious to hear what you have to say. And Medtronic's got a new line of CGMs coming, the Simplera and a partnership with Abbott. I get into that in my CGMs video. You can watch that with the link in the show notes where I kind of go through all of the CGMs that are coming out this year and beyond. That is a must watch after this. Now, I wonder, are more infusion sets, are more pumps working on lasting that full seven days? They are, and I'm about to tell you. But first, let's hear a word from our sponsor, Thrivable. I am a huge fan of diabetes tech. The pumps, the CGMs, the apps. It is honestly incredible how far we have come. But these innovations don't just come out of thin air. Healthcare companies need real patient insights, and that's where Thrivable and you come in. Thrivable runs research studies focused on people living with diabetes that help shape the future of diabetes care for all of us. They partner with the biggest names in the industry to make sure patient voices are part of their product design decisions. Signing up and participating is easy. All you need to do is the following. Create your Thrivable profile, watch for study invitations to hit your inbox, then join a research study and get paid for your participation and time. Thrivable pays up to $75 an hour for online studies and as much as $2,000 for in-person ones. So if you're like me and ready to help shape the future of next-gen diabetes tech and get compensated for it, head over to thrivable.app slash diabetech or click the link in the show notes and sign up today. Medtronic is working on their next generation tube pump, the 8 series, and this would also last up to seven days with their extended infusion set. This device doesn't have a screen. It would be controlled just on a phone, on both iPhone and Android. There is at least one button on it, and I surmise that this button would be a bolus button, among possibly other things, that would allow you to bolus when your phone's not near you. I did this with Tandem Mobi. I showed that off in my Tandem Mobi video, and it was the number one feature I had on that pump. Medtronic told investors that a pivotal trial of the 8 series would happen in 2025. A pivotal series is when humans start to use it, so that could mean that we're seeing this pump soon. I sure hope so. Tandem is also working on an extended infusion set. Their steady set got 510k clearance from the FDA, but currently that clearance is only for three days. The company is now going to seek a seven day clearance for this steady set and they're not going to put this out to consumers until it gets that seven day clearance. The nice thing about this infusion set is that it is a one handed device. You don't have to like twist it and hold on to it and, and kind of finagle all of the wiring the way you did with their current sets, which I got into in all of my Moby content. You just, this is used with one hand, you press the buttons and bada bing, bada boom, you got an infusion set on and you only use one hand, which could be great for people who only have one hand or only have mobility in one hand. Up to a week infusion set is a very exciting place to be. I hope that we see it in more pumps and that even the Omnipod, which only lasts three days, could one day last seven days too. I get into that hope and a lot more for Omnipod in my next generation Omnipod wants article and video, you can check that out with the link in the show notes. Medtronic's 8 series pump gives us a little bit of a peek into the future of, I think most pumps are going to be screenless moving forward, whether they're tubeless or tubed. 
It's a trend we're seeing not just with those traditional tube pumps, but even with pumps that get adhered to the skin or have the option to, like Tandem Moby or even the Kaleido pump and the upcoming Kaleido 2. The Kaleido 2 I saw at ATTD, it's the prettiest pump I've ever seen. It doesn't have a screen, it's similar to Moby in that way, and it's hybrid. It can be worn on the skin or in your pocket. And interestingly, Kaleido 2 also has a gyroscope, which could mean that pumps in the future could have the ability to also monitor the movement that you're making. And that absolutely, as we know, has an effect on glucose levels. Maybe they'll work that into the algorithm. And speaking of all of these screenless devices and these hybrid ways of wearing them, do you think that Tandem's gonna come out with the T-Slim X3? It is on their roadmap chart to come out ahead of some of these tubeless pumps, but is there really a market for another pump with a screen on it? Let me know in the comments. Do you want the T-Slim X3 to even come out or do you want them to just like bring out Siggy and the tubeless Moby? Now, another big direction that the pumps could be going is an all-in-one CGM and pump. And we've already been seeing that from PharmaSense with the Nia pump. So the Nia pump, I was able to see two prototypes where they built a device that had both a pump and a CGM. One prototype had a sensor nearby the needle that would give insulin, and then the other one had the needle that gives insulin with a sensor surrounding it. So they're testing out these two different ways of measuring glucose and providing insulin and seeing how those two interact. I've gotten into Nia a lot more in all of my Nia contents. You should check all of that out and you should check out my like ATTD roundup article where I get even deeper into, you know, what this pump and sensor would look like. So at this year's ADA, PharmaSense announced a partnership with Cybionics to integrate their CGM into the all-in-one device. So Cybionics received CE Mark in Europe for its GS3 CGM earlier this year. The device is just 2.9 millimeters thick and weighs 1.5 grams. This can make it easier to integrate that smaller CGM into the all-in-one device. Medtronic is also working toward an all-in-one device. I got my hands on this slide that shows their trajectory that leads them all the way to a patch pump that has a sensor. Now, Medtronic is uniquely ahead in, in this area because they already make their own sensors and pumps. So they have all of this technology in-house that they could use on a device like this. This next generation of pumps could also be fully closed loop. The pumps today are hybrid closed loop. You need to interject with your activity and your foods in order to let the pump know what you're doing and then it can adjust therapy. But could algorithms one day just do everything for us without the need for two hormones? That is possible and companies are already working hard at that. One company that's spoken about it a bit is Omnipod with their evolution algorithm. This would be their next generation algorithm, what comes after Omnipod 5's algorithm. They've already tested this with people in a fully closed loop situation. So they tested it with two groups, type one and type two. For people with type one diabetes, they had a 37% time and range with their current system with no logging of food or activity. And then it went up to 57% time and range with this newer algorithm. With type two, it went from 52% to 65%. Of course, these percentages are significantly lower than the ADA standard of care, which says that we should be reaching at least 70%. But the fact that we've gotten this high without even putting in carbs, that's a start. And I know other companies, I've even had a few tell me that they are working on this next generation of algorithm. And I hope we can get to a place where we could get at least 70% time and range without lifting a finger. No matter what happens, there is so much going on that something's bound to happen to make diabetes easier to manage. Thank goodness for technology. Of course, we want a cure, but we've got the tech and they are working real hard at making it even better. What technologies do you wanna see or which ones do you expect to have the biggest impact on diabetes treatment? Let me know in the comments. Watch my video on all of the CGMs coming out this year, all the updates and what's coming out after that. And stay tuned for my video on all the tubeless pumps kind of diving deeper in there. Make sure you are subscribed here on YouTube and you've got to follow me and subscribe on diabetech.info because all of the latest in diabetes tech news and research 
goes on there first and then it goes out to other platforms. But that's where you'll find out what is going on immediately. Plus you'll be subscribed to my newsletter where you'll get access to giveaways and even more. Thank you for watching. I'm Justin and I'll tech you later.